Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I will talk about the CEFR, that is to say the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, uh, which openly says that it's a framework, okay? The terms that were used before CEFR, such as elementary, intermediate, pre-intermediate, upper intermediate, you know, terms like that, were vague. There wasn't a consortium or uh, a common agreement of what they referred to. Most of the time, they were used to uh, describe people with this knowledge of certain structures. So the proficiency levels were more related to grammatical structures that learners have learned, hopefully. <laughs> An elementary level, for example, a level learner would know the articles, A and the. Mm. Simple present tense, present progressive tense, you know, things like that, so on and so forth. Now, we are all aware of the fact that knowing and doing are two different things. Knowledge, competence, can only be observed it is if it is exhibited in the behavior or acts or actions, that is to say, in performance. It is not possible to go into the brain of a person to examine, evaluate the competence, to see whether they know something or not. If they don't do it, we cannot assume that they know it, right? So the CFR, CEFR has brought illustrative scales of proficiency in the form of can-do descriptors. These are observable behavior. They are skills. They are not structures. Okay? A person can communicate or fulfill a function of the language using whatever structure they choose. Sometimes they can even communicate without using verbal language. They can use body language. They can just use eye contact, you know. Communication is not limited to certain grammatical forms, certain structures. If, for example, I need to ask for permission, I can use any of the following in English. Can I use your pen, please? Is it okay if I sit here? May I use your computer? Do you mind if I turn down the TV? Would you mind if I opened the window? If you don't mind, I'd like to take off my shoes. I wonder if I could borrow your car for a few days. Would it be all right if I borrowed your phone? I'm going to stop by. Is that okay with you? Can I get another glass of water, please? Could I get another glass of water, please? Okay, these are the things that I could come up with. I bet there are several other ways of asking for permission. Language is rich, very rich. It is never limited to structures. Grammar in the language is to serve communication. So it is a means of communication. It is never the goal. People do not communicate with each other to serve grammar. They don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, what a wonderful day to use present progressive tense. That doesn't happen. Okay. So if you see an objective like the one in the red box, as in the photo, it is not in line with the common European framework of references. Because in the CFR, 
you can never see these uh, tenses as objectives. They can be suggestion, suggestions, but they are never objectives. Comparing two pictures to find differences using present continuous tense can never be an objective for in CFR. Why do I have to use present continuous tense? I can use whatever I want to. So the objective should be comparing two pictures to find the differences. You cannot limit learners to certain structures. The teaching points that you can see in the blue circles can never be teaching objectives. They can be just suggestions, okay? And when you see objectives like these in the photo, like the ones in the photo, that means giving the native language equivalents or translating words or phrases or sentences uh, will be totally against or contradictory to the curriculum. Pay attention, please, in the curriculum, under reading, it says, students will be able to derive the probable meaning of unknown words from the context. See, they need to use contextual clues to guess the meaning of the word. So, there's no room for the Turkish equivalent of the word here. Or, uh, as you can see under compensation strategies, students will be able to derive the probable meanings of unknown words from the context when they read and or listen to a text. Okay? The uh, Common European Framework of References describes foreign language proficiency at six levels. A1, A2, B1, B2, C1 and C2. Later, uh, certain plus levels are also added. So you will see A2 plus, B1 plus, B2 plus. As you can see in the uh, picture, in the figure, I should say, these levels have different names. So A uh, stands for basic user. B stands for independent user, and C stands for proficient user. Under these A, uh, B, whatever, you see A1, A2, they have their own names as well. So the basic user, A1 will be breakthrough, A2 will be or is wastage. On the B, independent user, B1 is threshold, B2 is Vantage. On the C, proficient user, C1 is effective operational proficiency and C2 is mastery, which is very much like native-like proficiency level. All the descriptives stated in the uh, Common European Framework of References are skills-based and communicative. There are no grammatical structural descriptors, only suggestions, okay? A learner may have different proficiency levels in different skills according to this framework. So, Emre, let's say, may have, uh, may be A2 in um, speaking and listening, B1 in reading, and A1 in writing. The best assessment is done by the learner, learners themselves, okay? Self-assessment. The CEFR highly encourages learner autonomy, independence, and self-assessment, which requires critical reflection, uh, objective observation. Learners can always support their self-assessment by using 
their exam scores or portfolios or um, teacher assessments and so on and so forth. However, they should be able to assess themselves, okay? They should um, objectively uh, be able to say, I have accomplished this, but I still need to do this and that, okay? Language skills are categorized in uh, the way you can see in this figure. You see three main categories, understanding, speaking, and writing. Understanding can be seen in two different skills, listening and reading. Speaking, again, has two subcategories, spoken interaction, spoken production. And writing has only one subcategory as writing. Now, these skills are not mutually exclusive, but they are somehow integrated, very much like real life. Spoken interaction, for example, cannot be, uh, cannot only cover uh, speaking because there is interaction. So some degree of listening should also take place in this interaction because the uh, participants of the conversation or the dialogue uh, need to listen and communicate with each other, okay? It is a kind of a two-way street. Now, the Common European Framework of References aims, one, to develop learners' communicative proficiency, that is to say, uh, functions, notions, and social, cultural appropriateness. Two, to improve um, language and study uh, or academic skills. And, um, uh, the three, to cover tasks that are relevant to the real world, uh, uh, to the needs, language needs of the learner. Now, in the previous video, I have mentioned that our nation, national curriculum uh, for all levels uh, is based on the Common European Framework of References. So, if the book you're using has teaching objectives such as differences between two tenses, for example, the uh, present, uh, simple present and the present progressive, then the book is not in line with the curriculum. You can only detect this if you are familiar with the curriculum. Please do not follow the book blindly. Read the curriculum, understand its philosophy and Whenever you encounter something which is totally against the philosophy of the curriculum, change it, adapt it, okay? A colleague of mine has sent me the following questions. In the curriculum, she said, there are some abstract grammar topics like adverbs of frequency or differences between two tenses. For example, present continuous and present simple. Is it possible to teach these without resorting to the native language? Now, I searched the curriculum and here are the results. Adverbs of frequency, non at all. Present tense, let alone comparing two tenses, present tense, you cannot even see the term present tense in the curriculum. Zero occurrence, as you can see in the screenshots. So, these do not come from the curriculum. Maybe a course book writer has made this mistake. Maybe uh, this course book writer uh, could not leave the old habits behind and um, still wants to deal with those structural um, teaching points. And maybe a course book evaluator accidentally approved this book to be used at schools. 
There are too many maybes and it is not very healthy. Now, as a teacher, you cannot stick to this terrible mistake. Be aware, be alert. Stick to the curriculum and the syllabus. Okay. Now, I have searched all the curriculums, curricula, or the programs, and I have found several units on daily routines. For uh, I have found one unit in fourth grade, as you can see, one unit in fifth grade, one unit in seventh grade, and one unit in ninth grade. This reoccurrence is a sign that the curriculum is spiral. That means it covers one aspect of a structure and then builds onto that. Uh, each time it um, uh, deals with this point from a different aspect uh, to introduce it to the students. So this is what is expected in skills-based or communicative uh, programs. In the seventh grade, students encounter what people do regularly. And as you can see, they are given never, sometimes, often, usually, and always as the frequency adverbs. Nothing else, okay? So there's no need to try to teach more. Ah, let me teach you also generally or, you know, rarely. No, stick to the curriculum. And um, when they come back to the same topic at the ninth grade, as you can see, they build on to that. For example, uh, they learn once a week, okay, every morning, you know, things like that. So, here you go. The course book that my colleague was using uh, had that terrible mistake. They should not teach adverbs of frequency. They should teach daily routines and how often people do certain things. If you want to get more information on CFR, please visit the web page of the Council of Europe using this link that you see. Oh, there is a, a huge amount of information there, very detailed information. You can also Google it. You can write uh, CEFR and um, find several different sources. Please keep in mind that the national curriculum is there as the most important reference for you. Not the course book, but the curriculum and the syllabus. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Take good care of yourselves. Bye.